Welcome to another Avid Chat, David Harple and Jack Arnold. Jack, good to see you. Good to see you, Dave. If you're joining us today, we're going to talk a little bit about our overall financial health and well-being and how we can gauge that or even assist folks in understanding where they stand. And here, here's why we have found that this is important. A lot of times, Jack, people come to us and they have either a certain topic to discuss or maybe it's a concern Maybe they're going through a transition in life, but they come to us for some sort of advice recommendation that typically do, does has to do with their financial picture as well. But we've found that a lot of times if we don't get a good understanding of just overall how satisfied they are with other areas of their life, it might actually lend to either the wrong conversation or the wrong recommendation. So we're going to spend some time. Talking a little bit about that, we're going to show you a tool that we use here at Avid with clients that's been extremely helpful. So do you think there's one one reason in particular why um, it's important to look at the overall satisfaction of your financial health as opposed to just maybe one area at a time? I mean, <clears throat> uh, I think the, I mean, if you, you know, talking about financial health, if you just I think if you put it into terms of like just your general health, I think there's a good analogy between kind of going to the doctor, let's say, and, you know, kind of looking at your financial health in some sense, not that we're doctors, obviously, but, you know, if you go to the doctor and you say, you know, you go to the doctor normally, something's bothering you, uh, you know, hey, doc, I got mm -hmm. this, you know, my foot hurts or something, who knows? And usually they'll sit there and ask, well... Tell me a little bit about your foot. How did it happen? What, what's going on with this other stuff? Because a lot of times it's not, you know, your foot is hurting because of something else or, you know, your ailment is because of some other uh, thing that's going on. So instead of jumping right into, well, do this. They, they try to get an idea of, well, what else is going on that could clue me into what do we need to pay attention to? What's a possible diagnosis? But you can't do any of that until you get kind of the begin, the point A, what we would call is, what is your point A? Where are you now? What are you satisfied with? Maybe, you, maybe you're not as satisfied with something. What is that? Um, is that a, pre, you know, is your preference to fix that? Is that something you're not really concerned about? So mm -hmm. we go through a little bit of a process to help you figure out, here's the things that are kind of on my mind that I'm not necessarily satisfied with. How do I fix that? One of those things are, I came to you with this issue. I got a new job or, you know, I'm making more money than I've ever made in the past. And I'm kind of nervous as to what to do about that. Um, I'm doing really well. I make plenty of money. What is the next step? Like all these reasons that people would come to us as to try to get some help. There's a lot more to it normally. That's a very long, not one word, one reason answer, but that's typically the, the idea is let's kind of get the point A. Yeah. Well, and I think the doctor analogy is great because you, whether it's a foot or you're, you're having a hard time breathing or something, a lot of the conversations are, well, let's, let's just talk about what your lifestyle has been. Have you been exercising differently? Have you, you know, did you, who knows, sprain your ankle playing basketball? Yeah. What's your diet been like? So they, they typically tend to get some sort of overall picture of where you're at health wise and then narrow down into, okay, so when do the symptoms start? Exactly. Does it hurt anywhere else? Let me touch here and move this. Does that hurt? And so they're, they're trying to do essentially the same thing we're doing mm -hmm. um, on, on more of like a financial health, but they're doing it on a physical health. It's the same approach. Exactly. Yeah. What's going on? We've got to gather some information first mm -hmm. before I can just jump in and tell you Oh, here to do this. It's just not, unfortunately, not that easy. There's lots of things to consider. And unless you are somewhat consistent with how you're asking questions, um, you can kind of end up all over the place. So like even a doctor would have like, you know, they have a normal um, assessment that they would normally do when you come in there. You check your ears, check your heart rate, check your lungs. You know, 90% of the time those things are fine. But hey, you never know. Sometimes it might be like, ah, what's this that I'm hearing or seeing that's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So yeah, right. gathering information is, is definitely important. Yep, no doubt about it. So how do we do that at Avid? I'm going to share with you our screen. And um, we actually have a tool that we use with people. It's actually pretty fun to do. It really helps start the conversation and head in the right direction as we're trying to gauge, you know, overall their satisfaction. And that's how we call it. We call it our satisfaction Financial Satisfaction Survey, I probably should, before I do this, 
Let me get my cursor back. Sorry, buddy. Me too. This is some new tech I'm trying to use. <laughs> crazy Always hiccups. Yeah. Put my screen on. <laughs> Do not disturb. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's try it again. Share screen. Perfect. Yep. Good? I can see it for sure. Okay, perfect. So, simply put, financial satisfaction survey. And here are the directions. The statement below will help you think about and assess how satisfied you are with many aspects of your financial life. Select and record your level of satisfaction for each statement. Am I satisfied with? And then we're not going to go through all of these. As I scroll down, there are 20 of them total. And not all of them have to do with your finances. Some things are outside of that. Um, how, how do you feel about your money life? How do you feel about your ability to respond emotionally to personal finances? What's the level of insurance protection I currently have? So these am I satisfied with questions are then um, marked level one to five, one being not satisfied and five being psh, couldn't get any better. I'm super satisfied with my ability to meet my financial obligations. Right. As number one says. And the tool has really been helpful to us to then have again the starting conversation that I'll, although maybe you come in with some sort of um, thing to accomplish, thing to talk about, concern of yours, but let's take an assessment of overall where you stand and go from there. Yeah, it's definitely a start. Uh, I think it's an easy way to start kind of gauging uh, a point A. We do dig into a little bit more once we get some, you know, we do some other exercises to dig a little bit more, get some more detail as to, you know, what your preferences are, what things that you value. We've talked about this a million times in different videos. We've kind of beat this point to death in the videos. Is let's figure out first and foremost, where are you? What's your current situation? What kind of things do you want to be doing? What's the point of all this stuff that you're going to be doing? then we can start to tailor something to what you you individually you're trying to accomplish because everybody is different. Like I'm surprised all the time with people's expectations and what their preferences are. We had a conversation last week and we were talking about uh, tax saving strategies and that, you know, my default assumption is that everybody wants to save taxes and do the thing that's most tax efficient and not pay taxes. But somebody brought up the fact, you know, some people might see paying taxes as kind of like a civic duty and they don't necessarily want to go, <laughs> that's right. you know, out of their way to save money on taxes. They want to pay because they see it as like their civic duty, which, yeah, <laughs> I mean, everybody's different. So there has to be some kind of tailoring to your specific needs and situation other than just here's the status quo and this is what everybody does. Therefore, you should do this. The first step of that is... How are you satisfied with how things are going? What kind of things should we be focusing That's on? Right. If you're fine with how much debt you're carrying, well, it's pointless to talk about debt strategies with you if it's not of concern to you. So um, this is definitely right. a good start. So it's, it's not only good as a starting point with a new relationship, but even clients that we've had for a long time that we've been, you know, re um, using this as a, a check-in because today you may mark something, uh, the level number 10, am I satisfied with the level of employee benefits that I receive? That today might be a four, but if something happens with the company and two years from now it's a two, then that's something to say, okay, we noticed it's dropped down to a two. Is this a, um, something you want to address or nah, just unimportant at the time? So it's also a great tool for us as planners because we believe this is an, um, financial life planning is continuous. It's not just one point in time, set it, forget it and move on. Right. This helps keep really the focus going on to, as you mentioned earlier, what, what the client's perspectives are and preferences of what to talk about every time. Yeah. People's preferences change. Your priorities will change. Things that are important to you will change. It's un We've said this before too. It's un undoubtedly you from you five years from now is not the same person as you today. And you will change in ways that you right. probably can't even uh, predict. So revisiting these things is is just great. And this is a quick way normally to get, this is what I'm satisfied with. This is what I'm not satisfied with. Or I could be more satisfied, let's say. It's a little bit of a range. 
um, it's a great starting point. It's a good diagnostic tool to figure out, you know, where are the pain points? What do we need to be focusing on and what can we improve? It's been great for us. And it's a, you know, we always say like, oh, how can somebody do this? We've said this so many times. We will say, ah, here's, here's something good you should do. A lot of times it's where are you trying to go? And we'll say, well, how would you do this? Mm -hmm. And we would say, well, you could talk to a friend, talk to a professional. Um, but this is a great way to do it is just to go through and say, what am I satisfied with? What am I not satisfied with? At least you give you some level of focus as to, you know, maybe what's the next step? Where should I be putting my focus so that I can improve that versus something else that I'm not really concerned about. Right. Absolutely. So to conclude, one way to diagnose your, I guess, financial well-being is to take a look at the big picture. And one of our little surveys might just be the thing. We'll include it here as a link or a PDF. We'll figure that out, but get it to you. If you have any questions, let us know. That's what we're yep. here for. Any final thoughts, Jack? I do have one final thought, actually. If you're watching the video Perfect. and you like the video, do us a gigantic favor. There's a little thumb button on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up if you could. That would be awesome. So like it. <laughs> if you haven't already subscribed to the channel... You can go to YouTube, subscribe to the channel. You get updates all the time. So you can go to and subscribe. And if you can, comment on it. Hopefully it's something great like you guys are so handsome or this is a great video or something <laughs> like that would be great. So I love your matching black shirt. Yes, all that. You great hair day, whatever. <laughs> so like, subscribe, comment on it. Um, we send these out in an email. I'm not really sure how everybody comes across these videos, but whatever it is, if there's a question or yeah. a comment or something, you can always respond to the email that we send out. If you comment on a YouTube, I, we can always try to answer the comments on YouTube. I believe we're allowed to do that um, uh, regulatory wise. So we'll do the best we can to answer questions or address any concerns. Like Dave said, we'll try to put the a form in a PDF or a link. We'll figure something out. Maybe you can do this for yourself and uh, hope you liked it. Hopefully it was helpful. Sounds good. Great to see you as always. See you next week on our Tuesday right. chat. See you, Dave.